Well, folks, they finally got him. The deep state colluded with the Times, the Sunday Times, and Channel 4 with dispatches in order to take down the star of the movie Hop. I'm being facetious here, obviously. I just wanted to open this with a joke because this is a depressing topic and I didn't really want to dive into it cold. A couple of years ago, we talked about systemic abuse in the TV and film industry, specifically when talking about the Noel Clark and John Barrowman accusations in early 2021. And while this is primarily a Doctor Who commentary channel, Russell Brand has nothing to do with Doctor Who, but I figured that there was a certain perspective, a certain angle, and a few things that have been brought up in the Dispatches documentary and the Times and Sunday Times reporting associated with it that I think are worth diving into and talking more about. Now, I'm not going to go in detail in the accusations that have been leveled at Russell Brand, former comedian, former Hollywood star, now turned conspiracy theorist, wellness guru on YouTube, because quite frankly, they are disgusting and depressing, and I'm sure that you folks are already aware of most of them. I'll put a link in the description to the Times reporting, I also highly recommend that if you're able to in the UK that you do watch the full episode of Dispatches that was done as part of this four or five years long investigation into accusations made against Russell Brand. Suffice it to say he's been accused of sexual assault up to and including rape by multiple women, one of whom was a 16 year old girl when it happened. Obviously at time of making this video these are just accusations, they have not been formally proven in a court of law, this is currently right now in the court of public opinion. Not that that matters in many cases but we'll get to that a little bit later. So why have I decided to talk about this? Well for those of you who don't know I do currently work in the TV and film industry. Industry. I've been working in it for about seven years, currently working as a below-the-line crew member, up to and including roles such as third assistant director and assistant floor manager. Many years ago, in fact, I actually worked as a runner on Roast Battle UK, the season where Russell Brand was involved, and I actually briefly did work with Russell Brand. Now, hold your horses, folks. I'm not here to give some sort of scoop or super insight into my relationship with Russell Brand, and this was back in 2017 when I was just starting out in the TV and film industry. While I do work in the TV and film industry, I like to use my YouTube platform to talk about advocacy for not just people who watch media but also the people who make it and work on it especially. And that's the perspective that I'm approaching these allegations from Russell Brand, which, like I said, have been heavily outlined in this Times article, which you can read online. This article published last Saturday from Rosamond Irwin, Charlotte Wace, and Paul Morgan Bentley is the result of a four-year-long investigation into Russell Brand's supposed behaviour. And there seem to be an awful lot of receipts in the article, including but not limited to texts that have been confirmed to have come from Russell Brand's phone, apologising for the acts that he is alleged to have committed and also paperwork and evidence from a rape crisis centre from someone who claims to have been sexually assaulted by Russell Brand. But a lot of the evidence itself actually takes the form of stuff that was outly just broadcast on TV and on radio as well. Mainly radio for this particular example. For example, in May 2007, Jimmy Savile was on the phone to Russell Brand on an on-air conversation. Savile suggested the pair could meet if Brand brought along a sister. Brand doesn't have a sister, so instead offered to bring a female employee agreeing on Savile's request that she should be naked. I've got a personal assistant, he said, and part of her job description is that anyone I demand she greet, meets, massages, she has to do it. She's very attractive, Jimmy. Clarify, this was not a private phone conversation. This was broadcast. You can listen to it right now. During other Radio 2 episodes, Brand made a series of sexual remarks about the newsreader Andrea Simmons, describing her on air as erotic and a sex bomb and telling listeners that he would like to go under the desk while she was reading the news. Several times after this, it is implied that Brand was forced to apologise by BBC production staff. If you actually watch the full Dispatches documentary, they play clips after Brand had been supposedly reprimanded where he essentially just puts a target on Andrea Simmons' head and was like, oh, I've been told off, you know, by the, by the frigid woman, you know, words to that effect. Essentially trivialising a fellow employee in a sexual manner on live radio. Eventually, the fallout of this behaviour on BBC Radio 2 actually resulted in several people at the time, high executives at the BBC, losing their jobs, but Russell Brand was able to essentially fall upwards in spite of this behaviour. This is partly what people are referring to when they refer to Russell Brand's behaviour and demeanour as an open secret in the TV industry. And one moment that stuck out to me during the documentary and during this article, which I wanted to flag up for the purposes of this conversation, where Alice, not her real name, who is reported to be the woman, or the girl I should say, who was allegedly groomed by Russell Brand when she was just 16 years old, still had a career in the TV industry several years later, and she sat in on a meeting where some Channel 4 executives were talking about who could host an upcoming show. Here's a clip edited for time of the Dispatches documentary outlying this particular meeting. 
There was a meeting that I was sat in and it was with a production company and group of commissioning editors. There were discussions about a show that was going to happen and who the presenter was going to be. The most likely candidate was going to be Russell. There were a couple of people in the room that raised concerns about him because it came to light that there'd been previous situations where He'd been inappropriate with staff members. The solution that was offered was that we would take the female staff off the crew, and then if there were women there, then, then they would never be alone with him. So the implications of this are not only did people at Channel 4, not only were they fully aware of Russell Brand's behaviour and the fact that he was a danger to specifically women who worked with him, but their solution in this particular meeting wasn't just, okay, we won't hire him. It was, okay, we'll bring him on, but we'll just get rid of the women. Which is, and I'm putting this lightly here, fucking appalling. Like, I'm not asking people in that meeting to go to the police immediately with the hearsay and the rumours and stuff about Russell Brand, but the fact that that was the gut instinct of the people in this meeting, it infuriates me to no end, and of course goes into the broader trends of the disparity of the men and the women who work in the TV and film industry. But with that example, I was reminded of something that came in The Guardian's reporting of Noel Clark's allegations in early 2021. In this write-up on The Guardian by Siren Cale and Lucy Osborne talking about Noel Clark being accused of sexual harassment on the set of Doctor Who. We had Jenna, not her real name, a runner driver on the early seasons of the revived Doctor Who shot in the mid 2000s. As part of her role, she was required to drive Clark to and from set. During these car journeys, she alleges, Clark touched her inappropriately. She said he would touch her hand and when it was on the gear stick and grabbed her leg when she was driving. Constantly, the conversation was about sex, Jenna said, adding that Clark repeatedly asked her to go to his hotel room for sex, asked her sexually inappropriate questions and made sexually explicit and graphic remarks to her. And this here is the key bit. She said she complained to an assistant director on the BBC show, and as a result, she was put on different duties. With this accusation against Noel Clark and this one against Russell Brand, what we're seeing here is a consistent pattern, a trend of the hires up working in the media industry, rather than actually facing the problem itself, actually just omitting and moving or in some cases just removing some of the people who are most likely to be affected or victimized by the ones who are doing these alleged crimes. Obviously, these are still allegations, and they're also still allegations in regards to Noel Clark as well, even though this was two, two and a half years ago. But the fact that this is something that those who make these allegations are consistently referring to, I think this is a case of where there's smoke, there's fire. How many meetings like this take place every single year? How many executives or producers or higher up know people in the industry who are an active danger to their employees, to their crew members, and decide to hire them anyway, or at least consider hiring them. As Dispatches points out, Russell Brand was not on a Channel 4 show in 2014, so he actually did not get this supposed gig. But like I said, the fact that this was considered to be a first option is what's so deplorable about this. Let me make one thing incredibly clear here. Russell Brand himself as an individual is the number one person responsible for these alleged actions, these alleged crimes. Let's make that completely clear. However, he was only able to get away with this behavior for so long and feel so emboldened to the extent where he could talk with Jimmy Savile on Radio 2 and offer his assistant to him naked on a silver platter, metaphorically. But he was only able to do that because people higher up enabled him to do it and looked the other way and appeared to be fully aware of the dangers that he represented to the people whom he worked with that one of Russell Brand's managers in 2006 allegedly said that it was a benefit for Helen Berger, who worked as Brand's personal assistant in 2006, that her being gay was seen as a, quote, plus for the job. She believes the manager, quote, wanted to make sure that I would be safe. He just wanted a purely platonic situation. Going back to Alice, she alleges that when she was 16 years old and allegedly being groomed by Russell Brand, Russell Brand would get a BBC taxi because he was working at Radio 2 at the time and he would get the taxi to pick Alice up from her secondary school and take her to his house. One of the stories from the Times here with Alice, as her taxi approached Russell Brand's home, Alice remembers the driver begging her not to go inside. Recognising the destination, he had started to ask questions. Alice admitted she was 16 and still in school. She says the driver replied that his daughter was the same age and entreated Alice, please, I'm asking you not to go in there. You could be my little girl and I would want someone to do this for her. He offered to take her home without charge. Fucking king. 
but Alice insisted she was fine. He had just such a sad look in his eyes, she recalls. So as far back as 2006-2007, if this story is true, then I have no doubt that the BBC knew what he was doing in his off time. That he was sending BBC taxis to secondary schools to pick people up and take them to his house. I of course do not blame the driver, but I am curious as to whether or not this was like an open secret at the taxi company or something. Like that the taxi driver himself is an individual seemed to know, but did he flag it with bosses? Did the bosses maybe flag it with BBC? These are unanswered questions, but there's this sort of knock-on effect where systems of accountability just falter when it comes to protecting the talent, protecting the celebrity, as opposed to, I don't know, protecting the 16-year-old secondary school student. And this, of course, responsibility, this sort of knock-on effect, also happens when it comes to his time on Big Brother and the runners who worked with him. I'm going to play another clip from the documentary, once again truncated for time, where people speaking up now who worked as runners on Big Brother for Channel 4 in the mid to late 2000s talk about how, in their own words, they thought that they were working as Russell Brand's pimps. My role was to recruit audience members for the live show. We used to go out flyering out by the universities, find university students who would come down and um, be on the show. Russell was pointing out women that he found attractive in the audience and then getting the runners to get their details so that they could meet up after the show. He would give a runner a piece of paper and it would be a phone number or where to find him in his hotel room. They would give that out to at least two, three girls in the audience. And I say girls because they were like, all over 18, but they were all under 22. I distinctly remember getting phone calls from women in tears the next day saying that they'd met up with Russell. They were mainly upset because they just felt used. You know, he promised he'd call me, he said he'd speak to me again, and I've not heard from him. It felt like we were essentially taking lambs into slaughter. We are basically acting like pimps to Russell Brand's needs. I have no doubt in my mind that producers knew about this behavior and enabled it. That Russell Brand was able to use his leverage as the talent, as the presenter, to essentially coerce the bottom of the line in terms of like film and TV production. Those staff members, some of whom may have been working their first ever jobs, he used that leverage against them to essentially get sex for him. From these university students who they would fly her for to get in the audience for e -forum. And the last clip as well from somebody who worked as a runner for Russell Brand on Big Brother. Rachel, not her real name, who was 24 at the time working her first ever runner job, was assigned to look after Russell Brand. And in a move that I can't even wrap my head around, talks about how the producers would use her relationship with Russell Brand in order to communicate messages and feedback and notes to him. It was only one of my first jobs. I was a runner. There was a, a real sense for me of being the baby and wanting to make an impression on everybody. Rachel says more senior members of the production team working for Endemol would take advantage of her friendship with Brand. Russell used to have days where, you know, he was more approachable than other days. And I think there was definitely an element of not wanting to rock the boat with him too much because of his association with drugs beforehand and the fact that he wasn't that long out of rehab and that he could be quite vulnerable. If the producers or the series producer or director or anyone wanted to get a message to Russell and it perhaps wasn't going to be taken that favorably, they would get me to go in and tell him because they knew that I would soften the blow because they knew that he liked me, that we had a relationship, a friendship. So it, de it definitely felt like I became a bit of a pawn. If this is true, not only is this fucking cowardly from the producers that they can't even talk to their main host of the show that they're running but this shows not only just an active disregard of their duty of care to their runner but flagrantly and knowingly putting her in actual danger like why didn't they want to talk to russell brand himself in case he shouted or yelled or got violent or something else or acted up oh we can't do that we're only the producers let's have the runner face that 
fucking cowards using somebody who is known to be like the baby of the team because it's her first tv job and she wanted to make a good impression using that leverage against her to effectively act as an emotional and possibly physical meat shield for their failings over the next weeks months and potentially years as these claims are scrutinized and hopefully some sort of legal repercussions happen i really hope that if this is corroborated and it's turned out to be true that those executives or those people if they are still working in the tv and film industry right now that they are immediately sacked they are not worthy of the positions they are not worthy of that title they have proven here that they do not give a single solitary family friendly fuck about their duty of care a researcher claims brand's behavior while working on eForum and big brother's big mouth was reported to production managers at endemol the company commissioned by channel 4 to produce the shows they allege that they complained about brand pursuing audience members for sex but claims their concerns were dismissed the researcher remembers being told by a talent manager it's what happened happens with the talent boys will be boys it's not a big deal i sincerely genuinely and truly hope that channel 4 investigates these claims and if they think that there's any truth to them that those people are immediately reprimanded and possibly never work in this industry again there's a lot to be said about the power imbalance and the power dynamic you know the runners have to do what they're told because there's a there's a queue there's a whole line there's an army of other runners who will want your job so you better do it right you better do what we say otherwise we'll just give your job to somebody else but that power imbalance is never really applied to the talents or the comedians who work on shows like this russell brand in the mid 2000s was far from the only successful comedian who could improvise and rile audiences up or whatever jesus christ it was the uk in the 2000s if you threw a fucking brick at the uk during that time in any direction odds are you were gonna hit a comedian why is that leverage why are those threats of redundancy and being replaced by somebody else standing in line never apply to the talent even though 99 percent of the time that talent is as equally replaceable as the runners yes there are hundreds possibly thousands of other runners who are vying for those positions that they work for but you know what there's probably hundreds and also thousands of other up-and-coming comedians who could do those jobs as well was russell brand really the only comedian that channel 4 could get for celebrity bake-off fucking really did you not even like look at your rolodex and that imbalance of power the enabling of those executives and those producers who worked on numerous russell brand projects but still continued continued to hire him knowing allegedly full well that he was a danger to the people around him that he had a reputation that this was allegedly an open secret in the industry but instead these producers and executives did not want to do their fucking jobs did not decide to find another comedian or actually reprimand their host and allowed him to essentially fail and fall upwards for about a decade and a half a lot of this comes down to laziness, a lot of it comes down to just sheer fucking cowardice, and as a result of that behaviour, now it comes to this. Like I said, I'm invested in stuff like this because I work in the TV and film industry, and selfishly, I want it to be a good place to work in. I want it to be a place where I'm safe. I want it to be a place where my friends and my colleagues feel safe. I want it to be an industry where I can tell people and advise people on how to break into it, how to get your first jobs, what to do when you're on set. I don't want to have to try and explain to them, oh, by the way, there's the person you should be avoiding. There's the actor you can't be left alone with. If you're with this person, make sure you have a radio. We don't want this fucking industry. And we shouldn't have to tolerate an industry like that just because a few overpaid big wigs at the top are either too lazy or too cowardly to do the bare fucking minimum. Once again, Russell Brand is, without question, the sole arbiter of his fate. If these allegations are true and he suffers a career fallout as a result of it that's on him he has no one but himself to blame but we cannot ignore the ecosystem that knew about this that leveraged the positions of power from runners and researchers in order to prop him up and satisfy his needs like a fucking pimp and i'll end with this here and i think that this might be quite controversial when it comes to people's reactions to this investigation i find it incredibly telling obviously there are some people who take dispatches and mainstream media coverage and investigations with a pinch of salt and a bit of skepticism and in doses that can be healthy for example panorama an equally prestigious whistleblowing type operation similar to channel 4's dispatches was found to have essentially just lied about jeremy corbyn during the 2019 election yes these broadcasters and people who operate them do have their own agendas to an extent but if you're the type of person who says why didn't they go to the police why did they go to the media in many cases these people do go to the police 
and they're shot down. They're not taken seriously. And also, the police themselves don't want to do the bare minimum and investigate because these are powerful, rich celebrities and influential people. I mean, Jesus Christ. You know that, like, meme where in America, if you just Google Florida man, every day you're gonna find some sort of weird, kooky, crazy story of some man in Florida doing something weird? The UK equivalent is far more depressing. Just Google Met Police every day and you're going to find a story of institutional corruption, of sometimes flagrant abuses of power, including but not limited to sexual assault from Met Police officers. The same police officers that would have had to have brought Russell Brand to justice during his time he was living in the UK. Women, especially women who have been victims of sexual assault, have like subterranean expectations for our institutions to protect and look after them, let alone get any sort of justice. But it's interesting where people's hypocrisies and where their contradictions sort of manifest themselves when it comes to a topic like this. For example, you've got people who say he's got to go on trial, trial or nothing, it's all going to be a trial. First things first, even a trial itself in the court of law is not an ironclad way to get actual justice. But secondly, Jimmy Savile never saw trial. Jeffrey Epstein never saw trial, but it's basically a foregone conclusion at this point, culturally, it's culturally accepted, that they did the things that they are accused of doing. And reactionary and conservative advocates who just a couple of days ago were accusing David Tennant of being a paedophile because he had an LGBTQ plus pin on his jacket are now all of a sudden saying, oh no, we need to scrutinize the evidence. Oh, we need to actually go through this with a fine tooth comb and let, let the justice system prevail. Like these people don't care about justice. They don't care about victims. They don't care about a Assault. They just care about political point scoring. And then you've got the people like Elon Musk, Andrew Tate, and GB News, and, and Tucker Carlson and such, who aren't defending Russell Brand because they don't believe the accusations. No, in my opinion, they're defending him because they do believe the accusations. And they like that he abuses women. One presenter on GB News called Russell Brand in the face of these allegations a, quote, hero. She doesn't care about victims. She doesn't care about assault. She doesn't care about the truth. I don't even think she really cares about Russell Brand. She cares just about getting some imagined victory over the other, quote, side. And I'm worried that these bad faith pundits are going to use their commitment to partisanship and essentially let Russell Brand and all of the huge amount of people over his lengthy career who let him get away with this, who knew about his behavior to the extent where they would put runners and researchers in the direct firing line for Russell Brand, let them get away with it to own the libs or some bullshit like that. And that's that. Hopefully next time you see me, we'll be talking about something more fun. See you next time.